and get a fresh you. But the first subject, or the first question, is about emotion and uh, the role it plays in is emotion and, and how it plays in the front line of manifestation. It's the first line of man- manifestation. Well, emotion is the indicator of how much power you've got. So you're sort of right in your comment that when you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you have more leverage under the influence. In the water discussion, we're talking about the alignment influencing, influencing. How important is it to embrace all emotion, no matter how far away it is from joy? Well, maybe the word embrace isn't the word we would choose. Recognize is a word we would choose. Be aware of. It's like, how important is it to embrace the accuracy of the gas gauge on your vehicle? Well put, well put. Your tank could be empty and you could ignore it, but bigger trouble is going to come. And so if you realize that your emotions are a gauge about how much alignment and therefore how much clarity and therefore much power and so forth you are utilizing, you are allowing into your experience, it's always flowing to you. The question is, are you letting it in and utilizing it as you flow it toward your object of attention? So emotion is a very important key to you having control over your focus. Without it, you're just floundering. Yes. Lately, I've been having out of control feeling of fear in my meditation. And uh, you are on your way to your connection. But if you're having fear, you're not there. Right. Right. It seems like every time I get close to the expansion and I have the expansion moment the very next day or the, you know shortly after I have a, a huge wave of fear come over apprehension well we can help you understand what this is about and it's not the big deal that you think it is so this is a great benefit such an important place in this conversation let's just acknowledge that every subject has this range of perspectives or emotions all the way from absolute powerful passionate desire all the way to the complete absence of that that there is an equivalency that when life produces within you a question or a desire we know you can't just hear it from our words but we want these words to be impactful to all of you that when life produces a problem or a question it produces simultaneously an equivalent answer or solution. One can't be without the other. So creation is happening from you observing life, experiencing life, and it produces within you a focus of something. So it is equally wonderful when strong fear is present. This is going to sound a little weird as when strong Passion is present because it's the same subject and one cannot be without the other. Now, of course, you don't want to lean in the direction of the absence of it, but it is all right to acknowledge that both exist. Okay. And so we've been saying for a long, 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 long time that when you have a really strong fear or a strong negative emotion about something, it means that you have created a desire that's really, really important to you that's really, really big. And the awareness of a really big desire is really a valuable thing to acknowledge. And then humans, often those like you who come and listen to us, you want to be self-deprecating by acknowledging, well, so what? I produced a great big desire, but I'm nowhere near it. Well, that is sort of irrelevant because the fact that you produced it is what matters most. And the fact that it exists, when you relax just a little bit, you can move toward it. So that's what happens. You meditate and you relax and you move toward it and you realize how very much you desire it. And then when you focus back into sort of normal life, you lose your connection with it. But the fact that it exists in such a big way is the very reason that the fear can exist in such a big way. Does that make sense to you? It's like Esther remembers so clearly the day that she brought her daughter Tracy home from the hospital. Newborn precious baby. And suddenly the traffic was so frightening. 
Esther had never been afraid in the car before. She wasn't afraid of the traffic. She felt secure in her car until she had this new baby that she felt so much desire for the well-being of this new baby that the other end of that stick was something happening to this baby. And it shocked her how frightened she felt. You see what we're getting at? And so? The capacity to feel emotion was revealed to me. And I was reading a book, uh, Hilgebron, The Prophet. Yeah. And he speaks of joy and, and sorrow. And one passage in there stood out big time. And it's, uh, I dig a hole with sorrow that I may fill it with joy. And that just spoke to me more than any other passage in that whole book. Vibrationally speaking, there is accuracy to it. So the deeper you dig the hole, the more potential for soaring you have. And the more potential for soaring you have, the more potential for falling in the hole. Because you've activated something. Everything is two ends of the stick. Which end are you leaning toward? And so you all said, I'll come forth into my body. I come from stability. I come from source. I'll stir some stuff up and I'll ask for things beyond what is. And your inner being said, and we'll stand by as you are asking for more and we'll hold vibrational alignment with the new that you've asked for so that you can feel your way through your emotional awareness into alignment with your new desire. Because you knew that the stick had all kinds of potential and you knew that you wanted to lean toward the evolution of the desire, not toward the problem or the situation that had produced it to begin with. Nice to know, isn't it? Yes. When you meditate, do you find that feeling of detachment? Yes. I and have. so when you find that feeling of detachment, that's really enough. And once you find that feeling of detachment, then ideas will begin to flow to you. Are you at that point where you're actually feeling some impulses or even some ideas? So then it's all right in meditation as that detachment has happened to you. And now you're beginning to feel some impulses to do something or some thoughts are flowing to you. It's all right to acknowledge the satisfaction of those thoughts. Just acknowledge the satisfaction of those thoughts. And as you acknowledge that, then what is actually happening, the actual physics or structure that is happening, is that your source, who is pure positive energy and without resistance, is influencing you is influencing you, is actually changing you. Just like the part of structured water that has already been influenced or aerated or revitalized, just like the water that has been renewed by the attention of the focus to it can actually affect the water that it is now poured into, your inner being is actually refreshing you in the same way. And a little bit of that connection refreshes you in the same way. And so as you feel that refreshment, now you've accomplished your reason for meditation. You're back in the flow of things. And so now just allow your mind to acknowledge the satisfaction of that and allow the momentum of those satisfying thoughts to happen. Allow law of attraction to get hold of those thoughts and cause more momentum of that. And the more you do that, then the less likely it is that you will fall into fear. But if you just barely touch it, then it's possible that the very fear that made you want to meditate, you're returning to. Right. You see, when you're here in a gathering like this, and we are all tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and all of you have your inner beings here with you. We've all got you outnumbered. And so here we all are. And you're really under the influence of your own well-being because your inner being offers no resistance to anything that matters to you. That's the state that you want to live in, except that that's not the agreement that you struck when you said you would come into this physical body. You did not say, I will go forth into the physical and I will maintain only pure positive energy without resistance. You said, I will allow the resistant part of physical time on planet Earth to produce new desires. And without knowing what I don't want, I cannot find improvement, you see. We don't want you to feel negative emotion about having negative emotion. We don't want you to condemn yourself for having thoughts that don't feel good. Instead, just like we we're talking with our friend about his mate, the argument that he's having with her, we want him to appreciate. And the argument that you're having with yourself, we want you to appreciate. We just want your connected self to win the argument. Very well put. Helpful. I want to express 
that it's been very difficult to meditate for the last month or two for me. And uh, Well, that's not helpful to express that, whether it's okay. true or not. Okay, all right. Because what you just did, you took that into the stick and you're justifying something. You're explaining it and justifying something. And so our response to you, infinite intelligence, all that is source energy wants to say to you, so, <laughs> so don't make a big deal out of that. Okay. Don't make a big deal out of that because whatever you're focusing upon, you're adding more to. Haven't we sort of explained the normalcy of one end of the stick and the other end of the stick? And aren't we talking about, it's all about focus and aren't you really good at focusing? You are. You're also really good at facing the reality as it is. And we'd kind of like you all to get over that. Because what is doesn't mean diddly squat. What is is just the bouncing off place. The bouncing off place for more. More that feels good. People just get used to talking about their problems and talking about what is and looking for justification. And your inner being never asks for justification. And your inner being never enjoys or even listens to your justification. Because when you're in an attitude of justification, you're trying to convince somebody of something that nobody needs any convincing of, you see. Of course, you can't produce it in the moment that you feel it, but can you think of a better way to say that? I like it when I tune in, tap in, turn on. And I like knowing that my inner being is always there, ready to meet me. And I know that sometimes I meet up better than others. When I meditate earlier in the day, it's easier for me than later in the day. The less I get going on, the less I'm worried about, the easier it is to find connection with that. My days really go better when I find that connection. There's no right or wrong way to meditate. There's no one way to go about it or one way to accomplish it. There are not two people that experience the same thing while they're doing it. It's just a revitalization. It's just a refreshing. It's just a renewal. It's a renewal of life is what it really is. It's a refreshing refreshing mode. That's what's happening with the structured water that we're talking about. It's a refreshment. As that water tumbles through the contraption, it just refreshes it intentionally. So it's refreshed. And in its refreshment, then it can influence other water to refreshment because water, unlike you, is easy to refresh. <laughs> water isn't guilty about being stagnant. It just appreciates the life-giving properties of the refreshment. But you all want to explain your stagnation. True. Unnecessarily. I'm guilty. Thank you. Really good. Really good.